It's hot! I'm in love with my drill press, and I'm not afraid to say it. This week on Blue Collar Woodworking. This week at the Stomping Ups workshop has been pretty hectic. We've got people coming and going all the time. We're wrapping up our projects that we were doing during our summer break. We've had to send, uh, what's his name, Randy to the hardware three or four times just to get drywall screws and caulk to finish these cabinets he's working on. The biggest problem has been old man Rabishaw next door. The guy is complaining constantly. I've had to tell the guys to just stop putting sawdust in the guy's pool. I mean, he's 90 years old. What's the big deal? What do you need a pool for? He's a little white and pasty to be wearing that bikini anyway. Of course, it's been hot this summer. I don't know if you've noticed that where you are. In the UP, I hear it got up to like 45 degrees. So I'm selling off all my tools and investing heavily in rocket pops and snow cones. I've hardly had any time to work on the new drill press table, but I promised whole drilling magic and I intend to deliver. Our final prototype is a little more compact than our original design to save on weight, but it's still fully featured with lots of space for storage, with drawers and slots in the front, and the best part is the replaceable inserts. We made lots of them because they have so many uses. Not only can you throw a new one in when you tear the old one up with drilling, but you can cut different shapes and holes in them to fit things like sanding drums. This, in the combination with the holes and the dust collection from the back, provides a great way to do oscillating spindle sanding on your drill press. We use the same clamp design that we created for our horizontal router table. You slide nicely into the series of T-slots that we put on our replaceable tabletop and the T-track that's in our back movable fence. But the real heart of our drill press table is the system of lead screw cranks and sliders that create an XY sliding table complete with locks, cursors, and micro adjustments. For one thing, it allows micro positioning of stock, which is great for moving your stock to the right place to drill the hole, but it's also fantastic for doing a series of evenly spaced or even variably spaced holes with accurate precision. This is good for shelf pins, cribbage boards, whatever. Every woodworker I've talked to said they've never been able to successfully mill wood with a router bit in a drill press. But with this design, it is not only possible, but it works very well. Shallow mortises for hinges and cutting grooves and letters for signs. Really, the possibilities are endless. Even with this soft pine, there's very little tear out. Of course, this new design works best with a big floor standing drill press. But if you've got a bench top model, you can make some simple modifications so that it will fit yours. Just go to stumpynubs.com and click on the tab that says Stumpy Store. There you'll find plans for a lot of the projects we do right here on the show. And the prices are pretty cheap. Turns out that with the right jigs, little creativity, you can turn your drill press into one bad drilling, pressing mamma jamma. Here's some of the other additions we made in the last couple weeks. While having a couple drawers in the table is essential for storing things, I don't want my drill bits put in those drawers. I want to see them. And this front recess that sits just ahead of the downdraft section of the table is great for storing Forstner bits. It'll fit a whole set from one quarter up to two inch in divisions of eighths, which are the most common ones used. It's another example of how the design uses every square inch of space possible while keeping it compact. Another feature I really like is to be able to see my drill bits without having to open up a box. This little slide out holds two complete sets of drill bits. We have brad point and metal drilling bits. They're held well organized in their indexing slots that came in the original boxes that you bought them in. We just fastened them to this piece of wood and we slide it in the slot. 
you could pull it out as a drawer to get the bits as you needed at the drill press, or you can take the whole thing out and take it over to the bench. Look, we all want to turn our own tool handles. I mean, come on. But not every woodworker has a lathe. So we made an attachment for our drill press table that'll let you do your turning without buying a new machine. It's an answer to your prayers. Amen, brother. The design takes advantage of our replaceable insert feature by creating a live center with a couple of easy to find parts at the hardware that slips right into that recess. The drive spur can be created by filing down an old Forstner bit. Then you can mount the workpiece just like you would on any other lathe. You can shape it freehand using rasps and files, or we've designed a fence system that allows you to use regular lathe tools. It's fully adjustable by sliding it side to side on the fence and sliding the entire fence mechanism back and forth. You know me, I like to live on the edge, to push the boundaries between what's possible and what's just plain old unbelievable. So naturally, I wanted to turn pens on my drill press. Well, it can be done using the exact same tools you'd use on the lathe. Just take off that tapered end, put the top on your live center and the formally tapered end into the chuck, and your pen mandrel will work on the drill press. It's ready to put whatever wooden stock you want in your favorite pen kit. This feature of our table opens up a whole new world to a lot of woodworkers. I gotta tell you, I'm having so much fun with this drill press table that all my other tools are starting to get jealous. But hey, when I was growing up, my brother got all the attention, and I turned out just fine. I like to invite the blind man down the street over to the shop every few days. I swap a broom for his white cane and just tell him to wander around the saws for a while. It's nice to do things for those less fortunate than us. When Mrs. Stumpy gets together with all her friends, they start chatting about the good deals they've gotten on their new shoes or on a purse or a tattoo. Why should the ladies have all the fun? I'm starting a new segment about tools that we find. We're calling it Nanana Boo Boo. I find better tools than you do. This week I found a stunning 22 inch joiner from Miller's Falls at a yard sale for 20 bucks. It's similar to the Stanley number no. seven, which runs about hundred dollars used. So I got a great deal and I can't wait to sharpen this baby up and start using it. Now it's just like new. It even came in the original box. So you can't beat that. And I've got a place already in the super duper tool cabinet which still isn't quite done we'll get to that in a future episode if you've got a tool gloat that you want to show off whether it's a new or used tool as long as you got a good deal on it send us an email maybe we'll put you in a future episode and you can say nana -na boo boo i got better tools than you do dear stumpy i'm in the market for a drill press table but like everyone these days i'm short on cash how can I get the biggest bang for my buck? Sincerely, Penny Pinchin Hopper. There are some sweet, sweet drill presses out there, and if you got a couple kids you can sell to raise about a thousand bucks, you can get a really nice one. But for the rest of us, there's always Harbor Freight. In fact, the drill presses are some of the best deals they have in the store. You can get a small benchtop model for as little as 50 bucks on sale. But I recommend holding out and buying one of the larger 3 quarter horse 14 inch models that have 16 easily changeable speeds. If you've got limited space, go with the Benchtop Edition. It's by far the most powerful Benchtop press in this price range. And our new drill press table can easily be adapted to it. But if you've got the room, you're going to want the floor standing model. We really like it here at the Stumpy Nubs Workshop. And if you use one of those coupons you find all the time in woodworking magazines, you know, the ones that can be used even off the sale price, you can get this thing for under 200 bucks. It's a great buy. Our feud with old man Rabishaw next door, it's getting a little out of hand. Now he's starting to complain about McNugget the shop chicken. I guess McNugget went over there and laid an egg on the seat of his truck and he sat on it. Look, I know how he feels. It can be embarrassing. The other day, I ruined a good pair of pants sitting on a tomato I thought was a little tiny beanbag chair. But come on, it's just a chicken. I sent Chip over there to 
put some sawdust on it. Sawdust is great. It'll clean up anything. I don't even clean here in the workshop anymore, especially in the bathroom. I just sprinkle another layer of sawdust every few days. Works out great. Makes it smell like pine. I mean, you can't beat that. But with all that's going on, these projects we're trying to wrap up and the problems with Rabishaw, it looks like it's going to be another busy week at the Stumping Ups workshop. But tune in for our next episode because one of those projects is a new machine that you're going to want to see. We made it out of a rotary tool, some iron bar, and about 10 bucks worth of bronze. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> I bet you can't. In the meantime, check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Go to stumpynubs.com and watch other episodes and visit the Stumpy store to find plans, especially for the drill press table, which are finally in there. I know, I know, I've been there. You're in your shop and you're on a roll. You're starting to get some things done. That end table your brother won't leave you alone about, it's in its final stages. You're getting out the sandpaper, you're starting to really get to work. And then you realize you don't have any dust masks left. Now, you could just skip it, but you're already starting to cough up blood and the wife is complaining about the clouds of dust that come out when you sneeze. You're going to have to find some sort of temporary protection and it's going to have to come from somewhere in this workshop. Here's what you do. You get yourself a set of these foam earplugs. These things are fantastic. It's like that NASA stuff that they put in beds. Anyway, when you roll this stuff between your fingers, it compresses. Then you can slide it up your nose and it'll expand to plug and it'll expand to make a perfect seal. Then you won't be able to breathe in any dust. Of course, now you just have to worry about what comes in through the mouth. That is where cold ones come in. When you've got one of these, it wets your whistle and all the dust sticks to your tongue instead of going into your lungs. That's good for fiber. So sit back, have another cold one, because it's healthy, my friend. Hey, Chip, these are your earplugs for today. <laughs>